Welcome to Whole Man Ministries, where the word is being preached. why Jesus, his ministry and his life was about levels and dimensions. He already knew everybody that connected to him wasn't going to stay with him. Come on. That's why he told the multitude, he said, some of y'all followed me because you seen the miracles that I done. You saw that I fed the multitude. That's why you followed me. But don't labor for food that's spoiled. Labor for that that leads to eternal life. He knew that some of them was following him because he was able to meet their needs. But he knew when he started talking about certain things, they was going to depart. Jesus. That's why you can't You better grab this leadership That's why you can't entrust yourself to everybody Because some folks Are only following you Because you are an opportunity for them But as soon as you are No longer beneficial for them As soon as you are no longer An asset, they don't give ah, You don't want to talk You don't want to talk Listen, some folks are only following you Because there's a benefit But shut down the benefit and see what they do. Hey. Come on, God. See, y'all act like they take discernment to see search. They don't take no discernment. All you have to do is stop being an asset to folk that say they committed to you, that say they loyal to you. Stop being an asset. Stop being a benefit and you will see why they following you. Come on, you don't want to talk. Oh, you don't like that? Well, let me help you out. Same way in relationships. Yeah, you yeah, you don't go to me for the cake, but you're doing it anyway, so I'm going to use it. Watch it. Close your legs and see when he hang around. Yeah, my God. Quiet up in here, this old Presbyterian church. <laughs> Close your legs and see what that rascal hang around. He can text, I love you all day. Shut your legs and see what he do. Are you there? My God. It ain't hard to see why folks following you. Jesus tested them when he said what he said. When he started talking about drinking his blood and eating his flesh, that was a test. He knew some of them folk were following him because they were following him because they wanted his ministry. They were following him for opportunity. So Jesus said, time to shake the folk that ain't really fucking. So watch this. Unless you drink my blood and eat my flesh, you ain't got no part with me. Now when he said it, they started talking. Come on, somebody. See, when leadership say certain stuff, you will have folk talking now. Yeah. Now you want to hold up and talk. You're holding up and talking because you don't like the leadership seat. They didn't like what Jesus said when he said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. Now you're having a meeting. Are you there? They said, who can, who can do this? And you know one thing about folk who don't follow you genuinely? They never lead by themselves. <laughs> They all got to have support in their rebellion. My wow. Some folk rebellious, but they ain't bold enough to rebel alone. They need company. Damn. Huh? Jesus. Now, why when folk rebel, they got to ask the other person, what you think? Mm. See, they need support. Mm. Rebellion needs support. Yes. So, watch it. It wasn't just one person that stopped following Jesus, he had 72. Mm. He was left with 20. So the group on said, we, we, we can't. Why? They weren't ready for the next level. So Jesus already knew. They didn't catch him by surprise. They weren't going to keep following him. He already knew what they was going to do. That's why he said what he said. He said it because sometimes God will give you what to say to shake the haters. Uh, sometimes God will give you what to say to shake off folk who ain't really for you. He'll give you the words to say. He'll give you stuff to do because he's ready to shake them off. Because where he's taking you, they ain't going. Jesus. 
Are you there? The seed is the word. Mark 11 and 23. The book of Mark 11 and 23. Your problem is seed. Some of you are stuck because you got the wrong seed. You didn't got seed from the wrong folk, the wrong environment, the wrong people then gave you seed. Your problem is seed, but the good thing is your solution is seed. See, you're trying to find another solution for your problem, but the problem is the same thing that you got. Jesus. You got wrong seed, so in order for you to get free, in order for you to get delivered, in order for you to go to the next level, you just need to get the right seed. Yeah. Are you there? Yeah. Yes, you gotta get it. All you have to do is change your seed. Yes. Switch seed. You want to go high? Switch seed. Yes, God. Ah, come on, talk. Listen, if you're trying to go above religion, legalism, tradition, all you got to do is stop receiving that type of seed. My God. Come on. Huh? Come on. All right, you don't understand? Let me, bring, let me bring it where you at. Only a fool will sit there and keep sowing apple tree seeds but expect oranges. Yes, yes. The ground is going to produce according to what you put in. Are you there? Yeah. That goes for relationship and everything. Relationship tore up. Somebody been playing the wrong seed. Huh? And for the men, the woman beat down, she depressed, she, she frustrated. Watch this. It ain't the world that got up. It ain't the world that did it to her. Find the man she with. Okay. How y'all want to talk? Because the woman is ground for the man she with. He going to plant seed in her. Whether it's seeds of encouragement, whether it's seeds of building her up. Are you there? Y'all don't want to talk? Y'all don't like this, dude. Huh? It's the seed that he planted in her. Either he told her she was beautiful, or he told her you ain't, you ain't about that. He planted seed. Everything coming out of his mouth. What is seed? My God. And because she's a ground, she's an incubator, she's going to take what being said yeah. and she's going to multiply it. Even if she won't. See, it's more harder for a woman to shake words that are said because when, when, when stuff is said to her, it is received on more levels than a man. Yeah. You can tell a man, son, he's going to receive it mentally. But a woman, she deals with the emotions. Yeah, yeah. She deals with the mind. Then her body responds. So certain things you can say to a woman that she's open on so many levels to receive it. So it's more harder for her to shake what a man say than it is for a man to shake what a woman say. Oh, my God. Mark 11, 23. Are you there? Yeah, yeah. Are you there? Yes. The man can say the wrong thing to a woman. She 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 she'll spend all kinds of money trying to almost redo a, 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 a makeover. Yeah, yeah. Based on words that were said to tear it down. But you can say that to a man. He ain't trying to. He ain't going to make a nothing over. That's true. Huh? It's just going to make him go out and try to dog women out because he was hurt by one. Are you there? But a woman will change her whole identity based on words. That will set wrong words, which are seeds that were planted in her by somebody that she loved. And the danger in it, love opened you up to the person you love. Are you there? That's why who you love, you got to trust them. Because if there's no trust, there's no openness. Are you there? 11 and 23. For verily I say unto you that whosoever, somebody say who. So whatever. See, are you a whosoever? Whosoever. See, I like that about the word because he, he, he it's no respect to person. Whosoever. You are whosoever. He said, whosoever. No matter who he is, shall say unto this mountain. See, we sung songs back in the days that weren't biblical. 
Lord, if you don't move the mountain, give me the strength to climb. He ain't told you to climb no mountain. Come on. Come on. Thank you. Now, it sounds good. That's probably why you're tired. You've been trying to climb mountains. Okay. That's it. Come on. Huh? That's it. You go out because you've been climbing mountains. Some of you have been fighting with mountains. Mm -hmm. He ain't told you to tussle with the mountain. Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all don't want to talk. See, this oh, next level God. word up in here. Right? I don't have time to be playing around with shallow stuff. Jesus. You better eat on this level. Look, I don't care if you in the first grade spiritually. If you eat the word that's coming forth, you're going to jump up to the sixth, seventh, eighth grade. You're going to skip some grades. Yeah. Are you there? My God. Because in the kingdom, God can promote you. And what you fail to understand, God's promotion is not always to the next level. God's promotion, he'll skip a level and take you to another realm. He'll skip a level and take you to another dimension. See, you he got to go like in school, the school system first, second, third, fourth. No, no, no. God will say, I'm gonna take you from the first to the middle school. Why? Because I see you was able to eat on the level of that word. You can go from broke today, that's one level, to a multi-millionaire next week because you was able to eat on that level. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, play with me. I know what I'm talking about. Huh? You can go from depressed and ready to give up today to by this time tomorrow, you encouraging everybody on the job because you was able to eat on the level of the word that came for. Yes, yes. See, it's the word. It's the level of the word. Let me tell you something. God will elevate you out of your situation based on the word you're willing to receive and eat. Yes. You can eat on another level. God. You ain't growing because when you are, you're not eating on another level. Yes. You want the emotional stuff. My God. You want the Shadrach, Meshach, and the bad Negro. Ain't nobody want to hear nothing about no Shadrach, Meshach, and no bad Negro. Uh -huh. That ain't growing nobody up. Daniel in the lion's den. How is Daniel still in the lion's den? Okay. Are you there? Yes, Lord. Moses split the Red Sea. The, the, the sea should have been came back together by now. We don't want to hear nothing about that. Give me some word. Yes. Are you there? Yes. And see, long as you keep eating on that level, come on, long as you keep eating yes. on that level, oh my God. and God is a good God. No, 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 no. Give me some word. Yes. 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 We know God good. Yes. But then they're going to grow me up. Then they're going to bring me into sonship. Then they're going to cause me to see my inheritance. Then they're going to cause me to take authority and possess what's rightfully mine. My God, yes. No one grows outside of the word of God. You, If you say you're the king, you got to get the word. You cannot. Shouting and dancing in the church is not spiritual growth. Oh, my God. That ain't growing you up. You got people shouting dance all across the church and go right out that door to cuss you out and pull a blade on you. Ooh. Still operating like a child. Jesus. Are you there? Yes. It's the word. This is the part that the devil don't want you to get. And what do you see? When the word comes forth, all you know is just sitting and receiving. Yes. Have you ever noticed that? The word is the preacher that's doing the work. All you do is sit, believe, and receive, right? Mm -hmm. But notice all of the stuff that you participate in where it caused you to do bodily exercise, it won't grow you up. Ah, Y'all missed that. Everything you're doing in church that requires you to get up and do bodily exercise, it don't mature you. But the thing that does mature you is where all you have to do is sit, believe, and receive. That's what's going to grow you up. My God. Why do you think folks always want to get active in the church? Oh, I, God called me to do this because they don't want to grow Take a seat. Notice when you sit them down, they out. They don't want to grow. They don't want to grow. Are you there? Yes. Sitting and grow because you're willing to eat the word. That's why the Bible says Jesus sat and talked to people. He sat and talked to people. Teaching. What's going to grow you? Are you there? Hallelujah. Watch this. If you say unto the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. That's the issue. 
The word just told you how you get what you want. How do you get what you want from God? Easy. How do you get mountains out of your life? And they told you, man, time to go into no spiritual warfare. You did all that warfare. Lost your edges and everything. Hollering, <laughs> screaming. And that mountain is still there. And then you get up Jesus. Holland. Now you're gonna go. I guess you think if you go get four more intercessors hey. because you weren't strong enough. My God. Y'all did all that. That mountain still there. Jesus. You wanna know why that mountain ain't moved? It had it had heard the right thing. My God. It only responds to God. But God told you how to sound like Him. See, the word makes you sound like God. Yes. God said you don't need to say nothing to nothing but what I already said to you. Yes. Y'all trying to find something to say the stuff that's in your way or stuff that's trying to hinder you. God said, no, don't argue with the devil. Yeah. Ah. Y'all are, listen, can I, can I help you? Yeah. You will not out argue Satan. Ain't gonna happen. Jesus. He's more intelligent. You cannot out talk the devil. It ain't gonna happen. Oh He'll whoop you in a New York man. You are not gonna out argue the devil. That's why God don't want you to argue the devil. He says, say to him what I said. Yes. Huh? Jesus. Say to him what I said. Don't try to come up with your own words. Don't try to get on you, you snoop foot rascal. Ain't nowhere in the Bible God told them you're a snoop foot rascal. <laughs> See, you coming up with your own stuff. God said, no, say to it what I said. Yes. Because when you get in agreement with God and you speak God's word in faith, the Holy Spirit is authorized to move. The Holy Spirit has already been authorized. When they speak what I say, in faith, move on their behalf. Because when you speak, see, how do you want it? Listen, Jesus said this about the Holy Spirit. He said when the comforter is called, the spirit of truth, he's only going to say what he hears. What did he mean? When you say what God says, in faith, the Holy Spirit heard it. So guess what he's going to say to the problem? What God said. Yes. Did you catch that? Yes. If the Holy Spirit hear you saying what God said, he's going to echo what God said to the prophet. So really, you're not the one speaking to it. It's just when you speak to it, you get an agreement with God, and God going to speak to it on your behalf. My God, my God, my God. Yes. But the problem is, God is saying, you ain't saying what I said. I didn't tell you to go down there and argue with nobody. Huh? Jeez. See, that's why you got to sit up there and tell all that old fear and condemnation to stuff. Thus says the Lord. Mm -hmm. God going to kill you. Jesus. God said, I didn't tell you to go down there and tell none of them folks I'm going to kill them. <laughs> you went down there and said that. Yes. I told you to go down there and tell them people to repent. Jesus. You added your little part to it and said, if you don't, I'm a kid. My God. God said, I didn't tell you to tell them that. So when you said that, you said something God didn't say. Jesus. Which means the Holy Spirit said, I can't move on that. You got to say what God said. Yeah. That's, that's over your marriage, your home, every area of your life. You got to say what God said. And when you speak what God said, you don't have to add nothing to it. You don't have to take nothing away. Are you there? When you add to it, you know what you're doing? You put your hand in there saying, God, what you said ain't enough. I need to help you out. God don't need your help. He don't need your help. He just needs you to speak what he's saying. He said, if you say to the mountain, huh? Go to Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Your problem is seed. You got to get some seed. The seed is the word of God. Are you there? Can I bless you? Yes. Some of y'all praying about stuff you're supposed to be speaking to. Huh? You are praying about it. God said, what, what, why? Do you know what prayer is? Prayer is communication. 
with God. Prayer is not you taking God to a Santa Claus list. Amen. Prayer is communication. It's mean you you uh when you get into prayer, it's really like it's 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 basically fellowship with God. It ain't just you talking now, you listen to. So watch this. If I'm praying, really praying, and fellowshipping with God, I don't supposed to be in prayer like they like they tell, uh, tell them all about your problems. See, y'all don't like you. See, this this next level. Can I kill some tradition real quick? Praying about telling God all about your problems. Because he already know your problems. Yes. Think about this. If I left Peanut in charge, I'm the CEO. As a peanut, I'm delegating you authority as the manager over this whole warehouse. Okay? And I leave. I you you run it. It's, take over. I leave an hour later, then he come calling me, talking about they cutting up on the job. You know what I'm saying? Why are you telling me? Ain't you in job? You got the power to fire? You got the power to tell them to leave? I gave you a thought. Yeah. So if prayer was about telling God all about your problems, then can't you imagine God saying, why are you telling me about what you're going through when I gave you authority to deal with everything down there? I told you everything is under your feet. I told you I gave you power over all the power of the enemy. I gave Luke 10, 19. Huh? I gave you power over all the power of the enemy. Huh? I put you in authority. Yes. So why are you telling me about the devil when you if you telling God about the devil I can imagine God saying the devil ain't up here. Yes. He down there with you. Yes. Do something about it. You want me to come down and fix it when you see when you ain't growing into sonship and this is what folks don't understand. Somebody might say oh well it worked for me. I just went and prayed and told God all about my problem, he fixed it. You want to know why he did? Because you were still a baby. Oh, now he's challenging you to grow up. So that's why I seem like God is moving slower. He's only moving slower because he's required more of you now. He's saying, okay, I did it for you that time. I did it for you again. But now I'm not going to keep doing it for you because I gave you the authority to do it. So now I need you to grow on up. Jesus. That's why what used to work don't work no more. You used to run to God and cry about your problems and God will move. And now you cry about it and it seems like God ignoring you. It ain't that. It's just he calling you higher now. He said, I need you to come up now. Now I moved for you when you was a child. But now you should be a little more mature so I don't need you to tell me about that storm. I need you to speak to him. Y'all don't believe it? Why would Jesus say, let us go over to the other side of the lake and then he fall asleep? He fell asleep because he was giving them an opportunity to use the authority he gave them. Yes. But guess what they did? Rain and woke him up. Save us! We're going to die! Mm -hmm. Then he woke up to do what they had the authority to do. They could have done the same thing. Rebuke the storm. How we know? Because Jesus said, where is your faith? Yes. Huh? You want me to use my faith but where yours? That's what they ask them. Where is your faith? Huh? Some people don't want to grow up because they love dependence. Jesus. Ah, Y'all don't want to talk. I'm all about them. Oh, yeah. Some folks don't want to grow up in church. They can't take correction. They'll leave. They get mad because they hate dependency. They don't want to have to become sons of God. They will rather watch this stay infants in the things of God. So when you challenge them to grow up, they dip. Say what wrong? Y'all don't believe it. You ever had a baby? As long as you holding it, you can do it, do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Baby just love. Try to put it down. What is it gonna do? Gonna cut up. Ah! Crying like something wrong. You know what wrong with my baby? You pick the baby up and stop crying. You say, I thought something wrong with my baby. Then you gotta put it back down. Ah! You cry again. Then you go run and pick it up. Now watch this. The reason you keep picking it up because you love your child and you think something wrong. So a mother's instinct is to pick up her baby because why? 
That's my baby. Yeah. Well, when it comes down to leadership, you got to stop picking folks up because they're crying. Y'all don't want truth. You got to stop running to the rest of the folk because they throwing a temper tantrum and kept up because you put them down. My God. God told you to put them down because it's time for them to walk. Are you there? Time for them to walk. Huh? God set you down because it's time for you to walk. God said, now, I carried you long enough. You don't remember when Moses ran and he came out of Egypt and Pharaoh and his army came behind him? And the children of Israel, and Moses dropped and started crying to God. He said, Lord, he went to praying. And God said, What you calling to me for? He said, What's in your hand? Come on, my God. Why didn't he tell him what's in the hand? I didn't gave you what you need, Moses, and you're still praying to me. Come on. You still calling out to me, and I didn't gave you a rod. Stretch the rod out. Yes. What is the rod? The word. Yes. Come on. I didn't gave you my word. Use it. Moses was still calling out to God and had the rod in his hand. Amen. Moses stretched the rod out, the sea started dividing. God said, if you would use my word, things would depart out of your life. Are you there? Yes. But you got to pray and talking about in the midnight hours. God going to try to direct. No, 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 no. Yeah, I went no midnight hours. You speak that word now. Because watch this. You can get immediate results. Yeah. Come on. Quit see. Quit trying to mix time, the world system with God. Listen, you ain't got to wait no 24 hours to get no miracle. Yeah. Huh? That's the world. You keep trying to mix the world with God. You say, well, baby, just, you know, you know God going to do it by and by. The devil is a lie. You know, by and by. God, this thing yeah. does not. Yes. Yes. Ooh. Huh? Damn. There is no time where God lives. So to God, everything is now. You got to get in agreement with God and say, it's done now. There ain't no time where God lives. So when you start talking time to God, you're like, what are you talking about? Huh? That's why God will tell you, you're healed. He will never say, you're going to be healed. Because to say you're going to be healed is to involve time. Oh my God. And if he involved time, you're not healed. Uh, yeah, come on, man. Yes, yes. That's why God said, you're healed by his stripes. Huh? Take the time out. Faith do not work with time. If you're in time, faith ain't working. Because everything faith going to bring in your life is always now. And that's what Hebrews never say, now. Faith. Now, faith. Not tomorrow's faith. Not next week's faith. Now, faith. Faith works when? Now. If you're going to get it, you got to get it. If you believe, when do you have it? That's why Jesus said, when you pray, believe, you receive, and you shall what? Come on, come on. Do you know what? You shall have what you ask. Yeah. Why? Because when did I receive? I received when I believed when I got up on my knee. I already got it. Yes. I don't see it in the natural. Don't yeah. matter. I know it's materializing. It's manifesting. Yes. That's the process. It's materializing. You know you went and planted that seed? I planted an apple tree seed. Yeah, I got the seed in the ground. So watch this. I don't have to sit there and worry. Is the tree going to come up? The seed in the ground. The tree coming up. Yes. I don't have to stand over the dirt. Okay. Now look at your dirt. <laughs> yeah. now, now you know now, me and you've been tight for a while. See, some of y'all try to partner with folk, trying to buddy up to get something. You got to do all that. Mm. Now, now, you go way back like four flags on Cadillac, man. You know. <laughs> huh? You got to do none of that. Yeah, the saw knows what to do. Yeah, the seed knows what to do. The anointing knows what yes. to come on. Yes. I'm trying to quit the Lord is showing me. Listen, you don't remember in the old covenant when the man of God died, when, when they when they was carrying the body, there was a dead body in the ground. They messed around and dropped an anointed man yes. over in a coffin. Yes. 
with a man that was dead. Yay. And the man got up. Now watch this. Who was standing there praying for the man to get up? Okay. Nobody. Who said I command you to rise? Nobody. The anointing knows what to do. The anointing hit a dead body and knew get up. Oh, yeah. It knows what to do. Yeah. You wasting all that time sitting up there trying to give a description to, to tell the dirt. Dirt will need you to work in. I speak to no dirt. I put seed there now. See, the reason you got to sit there and pump folks and prime folk because they, they're not in agreement with you. Yeah. You begging people who ain't in agreement with wow. you, who ain't for you. folks ain't for you no way. Stop begging people who are not for you to be on your side. Wow, my yeah. God. Yeah, I beg them. You begging folks who ain't even don't even like you. Ooh. Yeah, they don't even like you. You begging them to be on your side. Jesus. Man. All you doing is giving the enemy an interest into your life. Come on, come on. Listen, saints, you don't have to beg nobody. You ain't got to beg for no job. You ain't got to beg for no money. You ain't got to go out there and plead with no bank. You ain't got to do none of that. You are royalty. Yes. Huh? You ain't got to beg for nothing. Because why is if you begging for it, they're gonna put a value on you. Are you there? Yes. If I'm over there begging for a job, they're gonna tell me what I'm worth. See. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you nine. You be here money. No, 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 no. You need my skills. No. I'm gonna bless this this job. I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna pay me. Yeah. Yeah. Ha, see, see, you ain't come on. Uh, you might not be there. I'm trying to get you there. Come up. Come, on. come up to the level of the word. Yes. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Come to the level of the word. Yes. Jesus never approached nothing that he was inferior to. Yes. That's why he could wait till a man died, then show up four days later yes. and say, Lively, come for it. Yes, God. He wasn't intimidated by that. Yes. He wasn't inferior to anything. Yes. That's why he can show up at a funeral and throw out the dollars, tell him, y'all get out of here. Yes, and call the person from the grave. Mm -hmm. He went inferior to them. Yes. That's why a man can have leprosy and Jesus can lay his hands on him because traditionally leprosy is transferable. You can catch it. It was like a chicken pox. You can catch it from being around. Why Jesus went saying, well, I don't need to go around. He got leprosy. No, he didn't went right on and laid his hands on the hill. Why? He went inferior to no sickness mm -hmm. or disease. God trying to get your mind up to the level yes. of the word. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Don't matter who fall off and stop following you. They stop following Jesus. That don't matter. God will supply every yes. one yes. of your needs. You don't have to beg for nothing. Jesus. Are you there? Yes, ma'am. Huh? Your problem, I told you the topic was what? Your problem what? Say it loud. I'm looking for what you said. What that word I'm looking for. Your problem, which is, is your problem was. Ah, uh, see, come on, come on, y'all. Don't be slow with me. Get there. I told you in the beginning your problem is. That's past tense. Your problem is no longer seed. Because you just received seed. Look at your neighbor now and say, that was my problem. Now I'm walking with the solution. Come on, see. see look at somebody say, I'm loaded with solutions. Huh? Yeah, God. See, the prophet's going to give you something to say. See, I'm Look at him again. Say, I'm loaded with solutions. Say, what about you? What about you? Thank you for tuning in to our broadcast on today. I pray that something was said that blessed you. All of our contact information is on the screen if you would like to support, donate, or partner with us. Again, thank you for watching Whole Man Ministries Incorporated.